three, two, one, go. Welcome to Grounds After Rounds. Is that it? No, that's, that's like Ario Speedwagon, I think. No, that's uh, uh, Barracuda. Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> grounds, group, grounds, yeah. grounds, group, grounds, group, grounds, group, grounds, after rep demo. Now you're like Dax Shepard. That was really good. That was cool. <laughs> that could be a new thing. One step closer to the top podcast in the world. <laughs> Emmy, here we come. Don't podcasts get podcasts? They don't get nominated for Emmys. I don't know what, what they do get. they get? They get nominated for something. Potties. <laughs> That's funny too. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of liquid here. <laughs> you do, and I thought I had liquid somewhere. Um, Did you take my liquid? No, no, I don't think so. Uh, I yeah, I've got my, like I've got my regular water. Regular water. I've got my bubbly strawberry water, Your, which is was almost that Waterloo. Yes. It's the, not uh, sponsored, but if you'd like to, yeah. Waterloo Seltzer. This is the members mark brand. Zero calories, zero sugar, zero regrets. That's good. <laughs> so we were wondering, like, is Whole30 still a thing? Because well, now it's like showing up on labels. Does that well, that's say? yeah, that's what yeah. I'm. Right. And I was like, so Nicole asked a couple weeks ago, and I was like, I don't really know. I mean, I haven't heard a lot from mm -hmm. them. Um, uh, Melissa. Yeah. Um, now I can't remember her last name now. She changed it. it she was... wrote a whole blog about changing it from Hartwig, which was the, Dallas's last name. So right. she was, you know, that was her married name. They got divorced. Now it's Melissa. What, and it's like, this is bad that I can't remember it. She wrote a great blog about it, about yeah. how somebody in the public eye who has created a business around a name, how you go about changing that. And, you know, it was kind of, you know, how it is a bit of an identity crisis and it's difficult, but, and it's more difficult for women. And it was a great article, really cool. And now I can't remember her freaking name because yeah. I'm a douche. Um, but all that to say, are you are, are you 30. good with names in general? Um, generally, but I've read the article, right? Yeah. Like I should, I should, and I know her. Yeah. Like I spent a weekend at a house that they paid for to train to be able to go run well, their seminars. I, well, it's <laughs> it's one of those where it like that's the whole point. It didn't yeah. register. Yeah. I'll never forget Dallas Hartwig's name, yeah. but I can't remember her new name. You've also heard that name so many times. Repetition. I'll give you. I'll give you that. Right, but the dude doesn't have to change his name. No. The dude never has to give up anything. Well, she didn't. She didn't have to change her name. She chose to. Right. Sure. She chose to. Okay. I mean, so I see. I hear it a lot in, in in businesses too. Like, um, you know, when I mean, Meg said when she changed, she changed from Hoyt to Lutz, and there's a lot of people that she Lutz works with, Hoyt. or Lutz to Hoyt. Um, she uh, there's a lot of people that said they they've legally changed their name, but at work they still it's. Because they've been there for so long, right. like that's how people know them. And so as soon as you change your name, it's... Well, think about that socially when they show up and the husband shows up and they go, well, you're married? I never even knew you were married. You, have, you still have your maiden name, right? Think of all the little social microaggressions that occur yeah. for the woman who mm -hmm. doesn't change her name, who doesn't follow the social norms. It's funny. Um, uh, so Steve and Casey. So Casey has not changed her name. It's still Casey Friel and Stephen Hoyt. And, and Steve's like, eh, like it. He's like, he used to bother me because she always said, you know, she said she would, but she's mm -hmm. just like, I hate the last name Hoyt because it doesn't go with anything. But they're super like, that's like a super plaid. tight knit family. Like, like what? It's like plaid. Plaid doesn't go with really anything. Go with yeah. <laughs> and, um, but like, that's, I mean, the Friels are like a really tight knit family. And mm -hmm. so they're like, I think she always, like, she, she's Irish and she loves being Irish. Friel is very Irish. Hoyt is not. <laughs> and, um, well, yeah, so I, we, it's German, right? German, yeah. And, um, so when, I guess they got their stimulus check in the mail, uh, but they came on like a credit card. Mm -hmm. On the credit card, it said uh, Casey Friel and Stephen Friel. Uh, and he was like, son <laughs> of a... <laughs> <laughs> now that's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, so we joke all the time now, Stephen Friel. Yeah. It's pretty funny. But anyway, it is. Whole 30 is a thing. It's on the Waterloo. Yeah. That was a nice rabbit hole. I have a lot of other stuff, but we don't need to go into that. More mm -hmm. importantly, the games. Part one. Part it's one. done. It's done. Over. Finito. Holy crap, it was cool. It was cool. A lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. You guys still got to watch it. Um, did you get to watch it or did you watch it when you did you binge when you got back? I just watched bits and pieces here and there. Yeah. I never I never like I caught um 
I think I watched a few yesterday. I watched a few like after Fiend went to bed and I just kind of bits and pieces here and there. Have I watched every single one of them? No. Do I care? No. no. <laughs> Why well, watch well, I watch the slow ones? I just watch the wins the winners. <laughs> right? Like do I care to watch people disappear for a minute thirty during uh So I think Armin's bet the Armin Hammer's um uh Tia um no Tia, Kristen Holta and Katrin's mm-hmm. um Naughty Nancy. Yeah. And he edits out the run. And he does split clocks for the overhead squat burpee portions. Oh, cool. And you can see how important their splits are almost, I mean, they're within two to three seconds, total like. Two to three seconds? <laughs> total like 10 seconds across the whole thing between yeah. the three of them. So then you look at their total times, it shows you just how important the run is in that workout. Yeah. And it shows you just how important the fourth round is, that the ones who did the fourth round more consistent also were the ones were the ones who went faster so anyway it's a cool yeah these the coverage it, i found it interesting that people um chase ingram and um bill grandler's podcast which i can't remember the name of um had a funny little in you know when they came in they were talking uh, chase ingram just like totally lost it on if you're coming to the games and you're watching it and you're out there and you're just complaining about how there's no live coverage it it has been explained people yeah. there's a reason this was not about viewership it was about fairness to the athletes and let me explain to you what you now have you have every single athlete's entire seven events on film mm-hmm. every single one of them and every second of that and you can watch all of them yeah. whenever how long in what order and also there are now media outlets buttery bros arm and hammer team richie morning yeah. chalk up the on. dude in your garage you got a dude living in your garage everybody now can take those and do with them what they will and create every known product that you would never even imagined and so the the potential the, the options are limitless. Mm-hmm. That was CrossFit's idea. It's like, look, we, we can't control this live stream, so we're just gonna we're just gonna get them all, and then we'll put them all out, and everybody can watch it. Yeah. So that stage two, when it is the final five, we can real that will be like. I mean, it's gonna be on CBS. It's gonna be live. Is this gonna, is this, they still oh have yeah, they, they still haven't fully said the way it's gonna be. But I was like, this is freaking genius. Yeah. And oh, by the way, it was figured out in six weeks. Like from start to finish of let, let's take this thing we had no idea we were going to do. So I was just beyond impressed. The coverage was amazing. The yeah. recap shows were great. Yeah. There was a sense of excitement. I mean, holy crap to those athletes doing what they needed to do to bring in people to the box, do it by themselves, figure out the logistics. Like yeah. from, from start to finish, so many people putting in amazing effort to give us nobodies yeah a viewing experience that was really freaking cool yeah so cool. Th- yeah amazing absolutely yeah. amazing like that that lived up to the hype and i are, think <laughs> and it's some for like pretty high quality like video too yeah. like well i think they sent them stuff maybe, maybe. i, I, well, I, I actually that. yeah i have no idea good point like, i don't care like it wasn't you know someone's iphone propped up on a plate where you like right like, you i mean you had i just like when you're um sending your video in for review for the open like there are standards yeah, you that you have but like i mean some had like legit setups and, and it looked good like it looked clean you wonder right clear. you wonder if crossfit sent like a you have to have a minimum 1080 1080 Maybe. you know dpi or Maybe, whatever yeah. um we need to have at least one of two buttery buttery bros walking around <laughs> with their giant that was really cool like some of the top athletes had and actually it looked like most of them had some sort of i mean clearly the buttery bros were down in uh, Tennessee, yeah. Well, they're I'm outside. Sure of, that... They're outside of Cookville. They're not. They're not oh, yeah, with they're mayhem not, anymore. Yeah. They're at that other you know, cage killer or something or yeah. calf killer, calf killer, CrossFit, yeah. which is a little aggressive, folks. I mean, geez, I like what meat. Is it calf killer. Yeah, I like what? meat and all, but I mean, God. I just call it CrossFit veal. <laughs> uh, all right, so Matt. Frazier wins the first stage in the men's side. Tia Claire Toomey wins on the women's side. Did anyone think And it otherwise? wasn't even close. Not I mean, close. like, not, granted, all right, Tia didn't have quite the margin of victory over Brooke Wells that Matt had over Noah Olson and the rest of the field, but it was still a battle for second um, 
more or less the whole time. Yeah. So we thought we'd ask each other, mm -hmm. why? Why do you think in this forum, even more so than in years past, those two sort of, without, without hesitation, moved out and just dominated yeah. for seven workouts, two weekends or two days. Two days. Yeah, I mean, just like, it was, seriously, it was never a question. I mean, at one point, Matt Frazier did not have to do the last workout. Yeah. <laughs> he still would have won. Which seems to be a theme for him in right. CrossFit Games. Right, like, but, but he did, and oh, look, he won it. He won it. So um, what's going on? So my so it's funny my first thought when we didn't even talk about this in our, our pregame warm up. That's why yeah because um, we didn't we wouldn't have surprised each but, other. But uh, right, <laughs> but mine is like it just shows. So this is where I hate the I hate the Rich Froning Matt Fraser comparisons like who's the fitter one who's the better one blah blah blah. Um, it's like the they, it's like the Bulls and the Lakers or Bulls something Lakers, right, right? Like from yeah, different, like years, different years different, different decades, generations yeah. different iterations of i agree the sport. i agree it loses it's um, fun but it loses yeah 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 i mean rick froning for those years was was dominant and i always felt like he, he was so smart though like his game was like he was he could he could watch the field get a feel for the field and he could turn it on and dial it back whenever he needed to yeah and he never like had to go harder than he need to because he knew he just i need to do this much to win and he did it and he was consistent and he did it he's a um, premier competitor right and and Fraser does the same thing, but Fraser I think can also just like, I can win all of these if I wanted to, you know what I mean? Like I feel like, and I and and I'm not saying one's more competitive than the other. They just they have different ways of approaching the workouts. Yeah. And so I think this format really, whereas like uh, I was watching I was watching the Matt Fraser Noah Olson uh, um, awful Annie. And like there was a couple times Noah Olson broke. Yeah. Right. If he's side by side with someone, does he break? Right. 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 And and so does he need that like external push? Yeah. Whereas like Fraser, if he's the only person in the gym or if he's one of a hundred, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. He knows where he's going and he's going all or nothing. Yeah. Um, but in a smart way, which we talked about a little bit too. So I think I I agree with you. I'm in the same uh I think the same category or like that same idea that um, I heard the the talking elite fitness guys say like, you know, taking it out of CrossFit into another sport, like in any sport, and they use the NFL as the example. I think this was Tommy. Tommy Marquez was telling a story. Oh, no, Pat Sherwood. Pat Sherwood was on and talking about like um, Chuck Bennington or one of the other um, – not Chuck Bennington, uh, Chuck Carswell was mm -hmm. talking about how like in NFL, like any NFL player playing on the field on Sunday is a, is a Olympian compared yep. to the rest of human population in that sport. Yep. And even on that day, on that team, there's two or three people on the team that are a cut above the average NFL player. Right. And now we've gone from like 0.0001% of football players can make it to the NFL. There's an even smaller slice that are like jerry rice right. or um you know they're generational yeah like, yeah, yeah amazing and then there's tom brady right right like who as much as he may irritate you or you don't like him as a player or whatever i don't know i don't know how you can't like him as a person like listen to him on armchair expert yeah he's freaking hilarious oh, he's pretty cool dude like yeah. i mean seriously like pretty humble and knows his stuff i mean a little like um probably at this stage has been anyway whatever the best quarterback to ever play in the NFL. Like, I think that you could honestly make that statement mm -hmm. just on his performance, but now he's going to play again, and he's the oldest player to ever play in that position. Yeah. Right? Like, he continues to just set record after record after record, and maybe it's technology, maybe it is whatever. Yeah. But, like, you could make the argument that there are people now playing in the NFL that were in – middle school when he won his first yeah. super bowl yeah. and he's now playing against them and still beating them yeah in a sport where you get your ass kicked for 16 weeks for 20 plus years yeah this year this is year 20 i think it's yeah. it's not possible like yeah. what he's doing is not possible but yet he's still doing it yeah. and that's and this isn't an argument about football but you yeah. understand my analogy yeah so 
let's bring it back to CrossFit. Mm -hmm. This is why I think Matt Frazier and probably Tia too, but I'm going to focus on Matt is not right. Like he's just not right in the head is because there are certain people that when left in a room dark and alone and you ask them to just keep doing something and I'm not going to tell you how long you have to do it and I'm not going to tell you how fast you have to do it, but I'm going to tell you that there's somebody else doing it as well. And whichever one of you wins, you're going to get to move on to the next stage. There are some people that will be like, okay, well, this really hurts. So I have to be going fast enough. Right. Right. They're the, they're the horse with the blinders on, like, who's thinking like, oh, I can't see. So I must be ahead. Yeah. And they slow down. Yeah. Then there's the horse that like can't see. So it just kind of keeps running at the pace. Mm -hmm. Then there's the horse that can't see and it hurts so bad, but they think to themselves, well, well, shit, if this hurts this much for me, then somebody must be going faster than me. Yeah. I have to go faster yeah. and faster and faster. That's good analogy. And that's the horse that runs until it dies. Yeah. And so you learn never put blinders on that horse or you're going to kill it. And that horse is a thoroughbred. That horse is one of a kind, mm -hmm. but we don't want to put blinders on that horse yeah. because it's, when I tell that horse, I want you to go until you die. That horse will go until it dies. Like, okay. Matt, <laughs> Matt Frazier is that horse. Like he does not know how to stop. Yeah. If in the, con like he does, because as soon as you put him in competition, he will only go as fast because he's smart and he's a right. good athlete and a great competitor and he's strategic and he knows all that stuff. But when you turned off the lights and put him in a dark room and said, okay, everybody else is going as hard as you are. Three, two, one, go. Yep. Friendly Fran is the workout to watch to right. see what I mean. Yeah. He's moving so at the cool. exit. He's moving. He never changes pace. Mm -hmm. And he's moving as fast as Noah and um, I think Samuel Quant's the other one in that video, maybe. There's, I'm wrong. Yeah, there's four um, in that video. So yeah. he's moving as fast as the other two, and they're faster than him in the first round. Mm -hmm. He never changes his pace. They end up having to take breaks. So clearly they have the capacity to do what he does yeah. and they have the mental toughness. And we talked about this and they, I mean, they got the fortitude, blah, blah, blah. Like all the, those are all the wrong words. They just don't know how to do what he does. And I guarantee you, he doesn't know how to do what he does. Right. It like, is, he, that's not something he'll be able to coach. You can't right? coach that. You can't learn it. It's just the way people are. Yeah. I've been in training situations. I've been in real life situations there are certain people that just have that. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. Like, I would say I'm more in line with those other ones. Where, I, like, like, I do. An, so, I, compared I, to, so compared to like your average Joe, like you do, like you agree, have a, yeah. but that's, but not, not, and, and maybe that's where you can see it in other people. And you can, right. you realize just how dangerous it is. Mm -hmm. Like if, if this is just a training environment, like, yeah. I want to, I want you to be able to come back tomorrow and I don't, you know, I don't want you to legitimately right. kill yourself, but there is that switch that can be turned on and off. I don't think Frazier ever turns it off. No. That's what I mean. Like that's, yeah. he, he will go to that place. So, so couple that with his just innate genetic potential that, you know, some people have it are born with it and some people aren't his you know, background of Olympic weightlifting, his yeah. um, support and his intelligence to surround himself with the right people that can constantly push him. And oh, by the way, he found Tia Claire Toomey, who I think is of the same ilk. I think the difference being she's just more athletically inclined. Like, yeah. I think she's, she is a cleaner, smoother, mm -hmm. smoother. stronger, like she is a better athlete than he is. He moves well. She moves beautifully. Yeah. Like she's ballet. Yeah. And she's got a little bit, and she's surrounded herself with a training partner. Yeah. Like it, she may have, I don't know if she has the quit in her. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. sounds bad. She probably, she doesn't cause she, holy crap. But you give her another year to like legitimately she never loses until she's wanting to be done. What's funny. Like I think when those, the, the year or two that she, came in second and like fell behind it's like a, like you know she has that in her to like I just, get I don't caught think, up like her, i don't think yeah. she knew how to like i don't think she knew how to harness it right the way that fraser does like she right. had to go hard and she didn't know how to dial it back when she she's just to, i just so. think she's got i mean yeah. i still don't think she's reached her peak no like she still has i think yeah, right? i think free and i don't think i mean fraser keys 20 pound pr is freaking front squat 
right? right? Like, if he's already had a full over 400 pound front squat and he PR'd it. Like, yeah. what the? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And he's over 30. Like, yeah. so A, CrossFit works. Yeah. B, he does still have potential and he's a smart athlete and a smart trainer at some point he will have to decide do i want to keep doing this yeah it's just like, it, it's just like, it's just like it any hurts. professional sport like you're you're there's a there is a toll being paid yeah, every yeah, single yeah, time yeah. and some sooner or later you're gonna run out i just think they as um professionals now and as athletes and as like yeah. their personal worth as a like what they feel is they don't I don't think they feel that they've given it their all if they don't feel a certain level of mm -hmm. pain. And when you removed the external stimulus that you talked about that mm -hmm. some of these athletes need to motivate them, when you remove that from that for them, it actually makes them go faster. Yeah. And Sarah Sigmund's daughter is an example of the complete opposite. Right. She finished Friendly Fran and she's like, I think that was really well. I think, I think I had a little bit left on the table or whatever. Like you don't, you like this the, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that's a good sign of like, you got some work to do. Yeah. Or this just isn't like, you just, if you're cool being middle of the pack and continuing to excel and you know, say, I want to Which middle it, of the pack for her is near the top. Right, right, right. Never top. Like yeah. we said last week, yeah. or last episode, like who the hell am I? To, to, <laughs> right. Like, like they're all amazing. Yeah. And they are like, it's so, we prefaced it with like super impressive, good on them to do this and like make me, I mean, whatever so that doesn't i don't think that needs to be said that yeah. all of this we're splitting hairs between the 0.0001 yeah. percent best in the world but that's the difference right there from being fifth and first right like those two were here yeah and then there was like second to eighth yeah and then there was everybody everyone else, else. Yeah. so there's something that they're doing that it wasn't close first second third fourth they were close. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and then everybody else in that two to eight range, which was actually the more exciting part of the weekend. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else. And I would argue if these down here had some work to do, it would be to, why didn't I almost poop my pants at yeah. the end of every one of those workouts? Yeah. What was I waiting for? And, those and ask the, yourself that. And those are the same people that, you know, during those cuts last year, like you don't get to take a workout off. You don't get to, right. you don't get to take a workout and say, and, it, I and I would say this competition, the format of this competition is not the time to say, well, I'll bring it on game day. Uh -uh. What we're talking about is that's how Matt Frazier and Tia Claire Toomey train every, every single day. day. Mm -hmm. I would argue that those people that were down here might think that that's how they train every day, but that competition is how they train every day like yeah. that you just got to see your training and your training protocol and all that stuff measured observed and measured against the rest of the field and how they train every day yeah. so it's not a question of your worth as a person it's not a question of your you know um protocol or your training program or the workouts you're doing or whatever this was simply a manifestation of the intensity that you bring and you may think you're bringing intensity, mm -hmm. but look, look at your placing. You didn't. Yeah. And that's all. Like, and, right. and it's not a judgment. It is truly objectively measurable. Yeah. And now they get to go out and now it's live mm -hmm. and you are in the field and you do, you are going to see the other five. So there is a difference. Yeah. Now you get to test yourself in real time against the other people. And so yeah. now strategery comes in, but you don't get to play strategery until you show that you have intensity. Right. So I thought that was amazing. That's what I think separates Tia and Matt out from the rest of them. I'm excited to see how this, this first part of the format, and maybe athletes to talk about it or not, but someone like Noah Olson who came in second, like, do you think he looks back at those and <laughs> says to himself like, well, I thought I was training hard enough, but I'm obviously not. I do, and I think and his coach does too. I hope his coach does. Yeah. He's too sm He's He's yeah. really – come in I, I know we talk i we've never I mean, been his biggest fan right right, right. And, I, I, and, and, and whatever like as an as an athlete i mean the dude's super consistent he yeah. continues to show up and i think he sees what he needs to do to catch matt yeah. i think it's just a matter of like yo man you're like three years behind yeah right like you're not gonna fix that in a day yeah you're not gonna fix it in four weeks yeah but you could you could give him a run for his money yeah. and you could scare him and you know 
put him in the, I mean, it's kind of scary now, right? Like you did it last year, you put him in a corner yeah. and he came out and devoured all of you. Yeah. So like, be careful. Like, do you, how much do you want to, right? Like yeah. you just, you, you just, you just poked the bear yeah. and the bear ate you for lunch. So yeah. don't poke the bear again next time. Maybe like, yeah. I don't know. I, you know, maybe just do you, but know that that guy is go- unless it's the Rocky scene, right? If he's going to want to beat me, he's going to have to fight me and yeah. to fight me. He's going to have to be willing to die himself. Yep. And that's the move, right? Like that's, that's what Noah Olson has to come to realize. It's like, t-shirt. like if I want to beat Matt Frazier, I've got to look at it. Not that I'm willing to die to beat Matt Frazier. He has to be willing to die to beat me. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Like, cause he is, he's proven it. Like yeah. he's willing to go until he completely passes out. Yeah. I see. No, <clears throat> I feel like a sad cross for a number of He's got four. He's won four in a row. Frazier is four right now. If he wins his fifth, he is all time on without debate. Like you can no longer make any argument that Froning was the greatest of all time. Frazier was the greatest of all time. Right. You, if Frazier wins the fifth, if he wins his fifth, you cannot Might make an time. argument that Froning was the greatest. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I guess you, right. yeah. that it is right. Even with yeah. his teams and even with whatever, right. like he is an amazing CrossFitter and he is, and he was great. And at that point, Matt Frazier is by far the greatest individual CrossFit athlete yeah. since the creation of the games. Yeah. On paper, since like, ever. here's what he's got. Right. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's, silly to say like we'll put them in a competition together whatever like they're just in different places you yeah. know what i mean like that's that, that's not the game yeah. um and at this point tia is the greatest female yeah. crossfitter of all time yeah uh, she, she's the only one who's won three in a row so she, yeah. when she wins four she'll just keep cementing it and then she could win five if she wants to caption has two. two annie does annie only have the one i can't remember i think i think so okay and sam has one so sam has one yeah i yeah. think yeah i think I think Captain's the only multiple. Yeah, other Unless than Tia. Yeah. Other than Tia. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. So our so other cool. one. We um a lot of new names, a lot of old names, um, or or known names in that top five on both yeah. the men and women's side. We thought we would say rather than like talk about who didn't make it and who we were disappointed we didn't see in there, is who surprised us the most mm-hmm. and who are we happy or like, hell yeah. Um about and it can be just we'll say just to you pick from either men yep. or women um you want to go first you want me to go first you go first all right so m- most surprised was for me brooke wells yeah um i i really didn't expect her based on these movements and kind of where she has broken out before and uh i mean well done right yep. movement looked awesome super consistent never really wavered yeah. um and I, I you know i don't have the numbers directly in front of me of her placing and where she was and stuff mm-hmm. but like did what she had to do and did it really well and hey she's knocking on the door i mean tia, yeah. tia didn't walk away with it yeah. she walked away with it but i mean it wasn't on paper as big of a oh, like 150 or 163 point win like matt frazier's on the women's side yeah. so super impressed super surprised i what did i say i said i'd be i'd be surprised to see her in the top 20 i think i think i said her her career is twilighted last week that, yeah so, something like that yeah. I, i'm eating 100 eating crow and i'm happy to because yeah. i think she's at i love it right like yeah consistency wins the day and that yeah. woman is freaking consistent and so yeah I, heck yeah i have to say like not only she make top five like she's she was right behind tia yeah which like she looked good yeah and so. I, I don't even think i've watched any of hers yet like i don't even think i watched hers because i think yeah in the past too like she's she's always been strong like she can move some weight but like i i think in the past like like her pulling has always been a little a slow little and i think she was one of the fastest friendly friends yeah um, so yeah she was just really great and it's cool and i'm really impressed and surprised yeah i'd say so surprised i i may have to say that was my surprise like that she finished second Mm -hmm. um i think i'd have to say the same thing like i can say i if i was surprised there are these two dudes that i've i i don't know anything about Uh, maybe really three dudes and adler 
Adler. I've heard of – I remember Sam McQuant from last year. And then, yeah, Justin Medeiros. Like, I'll say I'm surprised because I didn't even – they weren't even on my radar. <laughs> um, so there's that. But, like, obviously, yeah, Brooke Wells being second was like a – when I saw her name, I was like, hey, all right. Cool. Like, again, I've, I, I've always had no Olsen feeling, no Ol, no feelings towards her. Gotcha, um, like yeah. I don't dislike her. There's just always been something like I just don't, I don't get it. Yeah. But uh, but I, when I saw she was second, I was actually like kind of happy. I was like, hey, kind of moved well. It, and it's, was it's awesome. Because I I think as people that do CrossFit, we recognize like how much work, and we probably also have no idea what it felt like, but how much work that she's had to put in to get to that place, because that's hard, and um. And so, uh, yeah, so I'm so short answer, I'm going to piggyback on you and say, yeah, it was cool to see. I was surprised to see Brooke Wells second. Yeah. Um, pleasantly surprised. Surprisingly pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Who's your, your, you were happy to see them in the place? Uh, Haley Adams. Oh, cool. Good one. I was really excited because I said last week, like, I'm kind of excited about her and I'm see where you're in. Yeah. And, uh, and we said, because she's 19, she's balancing this plus school. Like, the stakes this year also seem like really high compared yeah. to others. And uh, so when I saw that she was third, it's just, I was really happy, like not because I was not because I said Haley Adams last week and she finished top three, but I was like really happy for her because like, I can just imagine like that's got to be such a cool feeling. Like you're putting in so much work in training, but you're also putting in so much work in school. And like, and uh, I was listening to some of her, you know, I was listening to she was on a podcast or video or something recently, just kind of talking about like there's also been a lot of transition because like she was in school and then she had to come home and then she had to move out, like she moved out, but she's not quite in school. And so it's been like this kind of a lot of running around over the last six months. Yeah. That it's probably been hard for her to really find a rhythm. Yeah. And um and uh so I'm really happy to see Haley Adams in that top five. That's I'm excited to see how she goes. Um I'm a sailor because apparently we're uh focusing on all the, the women on this one which yeah. is cool um yeah. mine was carrie pierce i yeah, I, I, pierce. I i like it um and, and catching's a close second yeah but with carrie pierce so i think if you go through she was never in the top five the entire weekend right and i feel like it is the perfect example of it is never over until it's over yeah. right like just keep fighting mm -hmm. like always until even when they say like it's over you'd be like okay well one more rep you do that one more rep and then like, all right it wasn't really over good job yeah. you made it yeah. right like it that i was so happy to see her and then i was so happy to hear her talk about how they found out about it when she was done she was like that's it that's all i had and it, it works out or it doesn't. And yeah. her coach came and told her, you made it. And she said, I cried a little bit, but at the same token, I was like, all right, cool. good. Like that, yeah. that's what my effort gets me is. Well, so I feel like Carrie Pierce has always been that like unassuming, like, yes. oh, she finished in the top three? Carrie, yes. Like, and I just like, she, ne and I know, and this is what I mean. Like, it's very similar to Catcher. Catcher never gave up, right? She finished mm -hmm. the first day. You could have been like, oh, this is it, I'm done. But that's not her attitude. And you know, that's not her attitude. Like she's yeah. talked about it. She wrote a book about it. Like yeah. Bergeron talks about it all the time. Like that's their thing, yeah. which I'm sure it's every CrossFitter's thing at that level. Right. It's like, you always just keep fighting. But the difference being like, sorry, I spent on you. She legitimately, I'm pointing at Carrie Pierce on your phone. Like that's it. Like yeah. I was so happy to see her just keep chipping away. Yeah. So sad to see that like who she had to get over yeah. top of the yeah. you know six seven eight places i was like oh yeah that would be so cool if they could have made it too yeah but that's competition I'm really that's not this exercise but i was really happy to see carrie pierce make yeah it. and like i'm um i'm with you like she's just always been super consistent yeah. I, I, I may have to backtrack a little bit too i think i was surprised i think i'm glad that katrin's got a seat at the table now for the five because yeah. like she's like she's proven right and yeah. i think and i think people have maybe thought like eh, she's Twilight. Like, she's Twilight a little bit. Now she's year, in the top yeah. five. But I'm really bummed Kara Saunders is not here. <laughs> that wasn't Kara the this. question, Eric. But I'm telling you. But maybe, like, yeah, when yeah, you yeah, said, yeah. like, when you saw the people that Kara Pierce had a leapfrog, I'm like, I'm just so I sad. I was so wanted her to, I wanted Kara to make it yeah. because she's coming back from the baby. What and those scenes of when she finishes Naughty Nancy yeah. and her daughter runs over and, like, jumps on her chest and she doesn't push her away. She just, like, 
leans into the hug and you're just like yeah holy crap she's yeah. awesome like yeah. that is just yeah she's she is just absolutely incredible and yeah. awesome yeah and i'm i you know she's disappointed but you gotta believe she's also like she also knows where she's delivered yeah like that and yeah. she did deliver like yeah, she's she did. And then I guess there was a mix up of her time with awful Annie, but I think she still either won it or got second or something. Yeah, she, um, yeah. Like originally they posted, she was like a sub eight, like seven something. Yeah. Um, but either way, she's, she's not right. Like she's just not human. That yeah. Day. She's, oh, she's amazing. <laughs> um, I, I can't remember where she finished. Let me see. Uh, with awful Annie. Or just in overall, general, overall. I think eighth. Eighth, yeah. So, oh man, yeah, Amanda Barnhart, Kristen Holty, yeah. Yeah, like all of those. Yeah, they, I like, yeah, Christy Aramo. I mean, that whole, that whole um, top 10 down to like. I'll tell you, Bethany Shadburn, I really like Bethany Shadburn. I think she's, like, she finished 20th. And yeah. She finished dead last. I was like, she's just, she needs to get stronger. Well, yeah, I, mean, I think, uh, I think she goes into that category we talked about with the first part yeah. of, um, again, yeah. the intensity with which these people bring to their training legitimately is not right i mean it, yeah. it's just I mean, when i say that like i'm being of course it's right it's just it is on a different level that any of us really can contemplate yeah. but the results that you see in a work in a in a series of events in this format shows like yeah oh uh, when you say intensity this is what you mean right and it's not on game day mm -hmm. that that's 300 days that's six months nine months four years fraser for four years working out in his basement by himself yeah and yet coming out of that again a winner and now and literally like his basement like not a not a home gym in his garage really. like it was a basement yeah like that that's the and you can see videos of all of them doing mm -hmm. that the difference being when he does that he's also yielding faster times than that yeah and so that's the, the, he just keeps depositing fitness intensity into right. the bank. And they're, they've, they've got a lot of, short of a catastrophic injury where he just decides it's time to move on to something else. Yeah. There's, a lot, big there's a lot of catch up that, yeah. that they got to do. Right. And the withdrawal yeah. would be like, well, I'm going to take the next two, three months off. Yeah. But then I think he's the type of person that would just reassess and, and move on to something else. Yeah. Uh, can we can we can we go can i ask you like it's funny too like isn't this um every year with the games like it seems like a lot of the focus is going on the men but when you talk about the competition itself like the women were just so much always more exciting it's always such a always. like that's always such a fun yes. competition um so if there was a um so of the guys like justin madero samuel quant jeffrey adler three people that i think you and i can both say no never, idea what, well i mean knew who, was like, never on our radar exactly. to be in the top five right. they can go back and just listen we never mentioned them so like is there a name on here that you're just like it's just kind of like a what happened um fikowski probably but not really yeah. i think we mentioned um sam briggs uh, i think mm -hmm. uh, i was surprised i think these workouts i thought played well to i thought she'd be in top five just because yeah. they were like suck fest and right and she just can, straight yeah she, just know, yeah she knows yeah. how to do that but i think maybe it's a, a at age is the 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 great equalizer and mm -hmm. at some point like i think you just aren't there like yeah. you know what i mean like and that's the thing like she's still the what she finished like 26 27 something yeah, like that she was 20 yeah yeah okay so yeah. Like, right she's the 25th fittest person in the world mm -hmm. okay like <laughs> at how old right right 38 like, 38 yeah. she's 38 yeah so okay like that's not real that's not normal like holy crap amazing yeah. so but that's i i expected based on mm -hmm. hype and past but that's also telling of like okay like maybe it's time to reassess your life and where you're going and like she i think if i was her uh life coach or you know she's reaching out for guidance and something i'd be like take this year transition you got to think about what's next yeah. you bring a depth of knowledge around this to market yourself or to to commodify yeah. that to something of worth mm -hmm. that nobody else can do 
Yeah. Right? She is she is one of a kind in what she has done and still has to offer, mm -hmm. but it's not, mm -hmm. I think, in the competitive stage yeah. at the open at this level at the yeah. open CrossFit games level. Yeah. Like that, this being the open category. Right, not the masters. I, and I don't think thing. the masters is gonna scratch the itch yeah. that she wants scratched. Yeah. And so that if I think that this is telling of that. I think Sarah Sigmund's daughter is pretty damn close to that too. Yeah. Short of like, you need to go back to the beginning and this is like a two to three year process. Which I feel like she's, I feel like she's gone back to the beginning a couple times in the last I don't, few years. I don't, but not ever really. But she like, hasn't, but she hasn't stayed with Right, it, she's always right? brought somebody else new in. Like it's yeah. a, it's a, she needs to assess like, why when you finish a workout and you say, I think that was pretty good. Yeah. Like there's an absence of sort of awareness around, no, finish? like, no, you need to be, like we need to look 21st, at this. Twenty first. So Tia Claire Toomey, Amy pointed this out to me. Tia Claire Toomey's push ups, handstand deficit push ups, are almost as fast mm -hmm. as somebody doing normal hand release They're push ups. So fast. So when we look at these workouts and we figure out like what is the time domain that they should be in, yeah. you need to start thinking, if I'm this if I'm an athlete in this stage, I need to start thinking, okay, with a PVC pipe and body weight, this is how fast this workout can be done. I need to be within 98% of that. That will get me in the top 10. Right. Now I need to be thinking, where do I find the other 0.1% to get me in the top five? Yeah. Where do I find the other 0.05%? Meaning how do I, right? Like how do I work in rest? Now, how do I get that rest down to less than a second? Mm -hmm. Now, how do I remove the rest? Yeah. Frazier rests while he's moving. Yes. Like that's the difference. It's that, it's that when we laugh at it and you've, you've written, written it in like notes all the time, like burpees are your rest. Yeah. Like rowing is resting. Yeah. Like double unders are resting. Mm -hmm. His double unders with a heavy effing rope. Right. That was a heavy rope, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they made it look like, cause I didn't, I they didn't, made it look like normal double unders. Yeah. Like I, I, I didn't read that it was a heavy rope in the, in the um, workout description. And so when I was watching, I was like, that looks like a really thick rope. Yeah. Like, but if you watch his rope. chest and his shoulders, yeah. he's resting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. he's just moving the whole time. So yeah. anyway, that's that I think to answer your question. And um yeah. we gotta get you, we gotta get you out of here. Uh, Meg's bring her home. So oh. we, we we're oh, not good. as I still gotta be done, but right, right, right. yeah, it's not cool. as pressing. We'll still, yeah, still um, be responsible with our time. Yes. Um yeah, I definitely say if I can if I can go to the men's side, um, uh, I, I think I think Chandler um, Chandler Smith is like uh, I think he's gotten a taste and he just he's crazy strong and crazy athletic. I think he could move better. Yeah, and I think that like with the right coach, he like he was sixteenth last year. Yeah, he's six this year. Six this year. He this was the first year time he made it to the game. So yeah. like. His trajectory is the right track. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. I think he is he is as strong as he needs to be. He's as fit as he needs to be. Yeah. He now needs to move better. Yeah. Which we were saying at the beginning, like when I was watching Fraser and Olsen side to side for Awful Annie, like those, just the GHD setups alone, like the difference, like Fraser was slower on the GHD, but he was moving better. And middle of that workout, yeah. he makes that move. Whereas yeah. But Olsen starts to falter in, so that may be a little bit. But I, um, needs, and I think those some of those athletes, you know, get a coach that makes them practice. Like, okay, this workout you're going to move as slow but as perfect as possible. Mm -hmm. The next workout I want you to move as quickly and don't worry about perfection. Now this one I want to edge back and forth between that, like yeah. constantly messing with it because last year's games, the row push press handstand walk, mm -hmm. Frazier went to plaid. And just like push pressed till, and he's getting no rep, no rep. So whatever it was, I mean, let's say it was 60 reps. Yeah. Frazier probably did 75 to 80 reps yeah. faster than Chandler who like really went yeah. like, you know, Chandler Smith went nice and smooth yeah. and Smith's, you know, he's kind of, and I, I think calling him Chandler delineates him from Ben Smith because there's too many Smiths. Yeah. So if, if that's a like, we call Matt Frazier Frazier because it's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. don't call Rich Froning Rich. We call him Froning. I know. I feel like, you know what I no, mean? I feel like, like I feel like Rich. I think a lot of people say Rich because he's like, when you talk about the NBA and you say Michael, yeah, you, you know, know you're what you're talking about. But I, I feel think, like, I don't know why, like 
everyone calls him Frazier, Matt, but it's or yeah. for both. We put them together. Yeah. So Chandler Smith. I think people say Tia all the time. Like, right, no right. It's so Tia weird. Like, why well, some get a last name, some get the first yeah. name. So Chandler Smith is like, his movement was perfect, and he probably did one or two extra reps, but they were too slow. They're too slow. Because yeah. that workout was about push the pedal. Yeah. So that's Good also flash. the difference of like, as an athlete, he'll start to learn. Yeah. He needs he needs more fidelity of like where can I let my move, movement slide and where do I need to draw it back? Yeah. Like those GHDs are way too expensive not to do perfect. Right. Slow them down a little bit. Yep. Do them well. Yep. The cleans they don't need to be clean like just yeah. it's only it's only 15 of them What's at a weight that be? really it's heavy but it's not that heavy for them. Once like a, like I said watching Noah, he like took to put the belt he on. took ten seconds yeah. to just tighten his belt. I was like, you don't need the belt for that. And lady. I mean, like, we don't know. know. Maybe he's working with the, maybe he's sore back. Maybe he is. maybe he's got yeah. an injury. Who is. knows? Yeah. But yes, those are seconds that cost because I bet you in a training environment mm -hmm. that's what he does. Yeah. So when in his own gym, on his own schedule, not in the stadium, right? He's yeah. going to default to what he does on any given day. Yep. Bet you in a workout like that, Matt Frazier looks exactly like Matt that. Matt Frazier had no belt. Yeah. He had no chalk. Oh, like, look at that. You're right. He didn't have those, a whole lot of equipment. <laughs> so anyway. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where where Chandler Smith takes the next step. Yeah. And then there's a couple. Like I, I honestly wasn't sure. I'm surprised Velner wasn't in there. But then I'm also I'm not. Um so yesterday's workout, overhead squat, right? We talk about no belt. I wore a belt. Like, why would you yeah. wear no why would we wear a belt for like we're I mean, it sounds like we're harping on belts or knee sleeves or whatever. Right. I wore knee sleeves. I had a belt. I had wrist wraps. Like I was all, all it up. kitted up. Yeah. Why? Why would I? Why would I do that when I just said like, oh, uh, you know, we're not. You're not there to put all that stuff on and da 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 da. Well, the stimulus of yesterday's was to build strength, and so like you're trying. Like yes, the belt gets you there. You're moving more. Like it helps you move more weight. Yeah. But then when we talk, if we go into um. Uh, Naughty Nancy. Yes. Um, you're probably not wearing a belt for those. Correct. If you, right. Like if you need yeah. to wear a belt to get that weight up overhead and go, yeah. unless you're in competition, right? Like right. if you're in competition and that belt is the difference between like three missed reps or right. right. Like then take it off when you run. And when you get back, yeah, take the five to six seconds, put it up because the second you put that bar down, yeah. you just bought yourself 15 seconds. But for us in a training stimulus, mm -hmm. I would say that's a workout you should be you should be doing without a belt mm -hmm. because it's any day in the gym strength day. Yep. And that's you need to build that core stability with the midline of your belly, of your abs by themselves. Yeah. Yesterday, I wanted to be able to, I wanted to see what it felt like. I wanted to scare my body, scare my brain yeah. into having that much weight overhead. Just knowing what that load feels right. like. Right. And yeah. I can't get there without and working with weird knees but yeah. i can't get there because my wrist is going to hurt too much yeah. without a little bit of support yeah. in the spots that i need it and it really it allowed me to really push Lock against in. that belt yeah. i didn't need it for the first three rounds but i used it to get like okay i'm using this belt today this is what the training which i always is. say I, I posted that thing that ackerman posted about like um there are people that don't want to use hook. It's like, yeah, there's people that don't want to use hook grip and there's people that want to be strong yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and Joan sent me a great question. Like, so when you, so she asked me a question about using the switch grip, like should you use the hook grip? I'm like, when should you use the switch grip? And, yeah. and I said, the switch grip is a lot like, now that the hook grip, ideally you're talking snatches and clean and jerks. Right. Like you're never going to switch grip a snatch or a clean and jerk. Correct. Cause, Cause you, you do like, if you do stop it now. Well, how do you get it right? up onto your shoulder right? <laughs> <laughs> or overhead? It's weird. Um, it's so weird. But, uh, but um, I always say the switch grip is a lot like a belt. Like yes, don't analogy. go to the, like wait to get to like that 80, like even 85 plus percent. Yeah. Cause you need a belt. Cause I also said you, you, there's nothing else that you switch grip like that neutral grip, whether it's pull-ups, whether it's rowing, whether it's some other Sometimes you can pulls. switch grip a pull-up. You can, but yeah. So K-Star has an analogy too. I like that analogy. Yeah. It's like a belt. Yeah. It's the safety valve. It's a, yeah. a hook grip increases your, your grip strength. Grip strength, yeah. But at some point, the grip is going to be the weak link in that system, yeah. and it releases. Yep. So if I'm going for deadlift one rep max, and I go to switch grip, I've just bypassed the pressure relief valve on a system that I've just said, okay, I'm willing to put my spine right. at risk now 
for the sake of being able to hold on to this bar. Yeah. If that's a choice you're willing to make for the sake of five pounds, like, Hey, I, I support that yeah. and I'll support your rehab yeah. and I'll be here for, to pick you up. I'll and, morally support your rehab. Right. Like, you know what? Not financially, but uh-huh. I mean, that's what that hook grip is. If you yeah. can maintain the tension in the lats, keep yeah. your back in a neutral spine, like all that jazz. Yes. Last time I checked though, the five pound PR that we get here in the gym is not going to pay your mortgage or mm. get you into the final five to go to aromas right. for the second part of the games right so you have to ask yourself is it really worth it mm-hmm. we deadlift for first pool strength mm-hmm. we deadlift to train to get stronger there yeah. well if 90 percent of your first pool strength is with cleans and snatches yeah then perhaps you should be practicing the hook grip, the hook grip. and let the valve the system the safety part of the system work to do its job that would be my long answer i like yours it's like yeah. a belt analogy sure but as i always say if you don't like the hook grip Learn, learn to it. love the <laughs> learn to love the hook grip. If you don't like uh, it, learn to love it. Cool. What was our last thing we were gonna do? Oh, uh, what's the one we're looking for? We can do this quick. Which one are we looking forward to? Because we're gonna do these workouts. Oh, when we we're do, do all yeah, the games yeah, yeah. workouts. Yeah. We're gonna do these workouts in about a month. So when the actual so when the second part of the games come out that week, we're going to do this first series of Yeah. Workouts. All right, friendly Fran, and I, I not at all. Like I know exactly how it's gonna feel. It's gonna be horrible. Like that it we are going to be scaling the crap out yeah, of that. I'm thing. looking at my calendar. That's I'm pretty sure that's a scheduled risk. Oh, yeah. dang. Yeah. Uh, uh, the front squats, the front squat will be fine. Yeah. The handstand hold. We're going to, again, be modifying and scale. I'm going to get four seconds. You know, I heard, did you see the make life great again or whatever? He's like, <laughs> yeah, one second to kick up two seconds overhead, one second to fall down. Yeah. I got a four second handstand. Four hold. second handstand. <laughs> RX. Yeah. Um, so all of those, uh, that they're, they're fine. Um, uh, Damn Diane, I think again, same thing. Like mm-hmm. it's gonna be difficult, but it'll I know what it's gonna feel like. Yeah. And we'll probably just have to scale load and scale the handstand push-ups. Naughty Nancy and Awful Annie are the two that I'm very intrigued to see. We're gonna do them as designed. Yeah. Way scaled weights. Um, probably scaled distances, maybe in the runs, maybe not. The one was 500? Yeah, the the burpees, I don't think we, so I think we'll just keep the weights at a weight that people can move well. The run will keep people in the right time domain. The burpees, I think, for um, Naughty Nancy Nancy. and the cleans for Awful Annie are the cool, like, wild cards that make them no longer those benchmarks. They're totally new workouts. So I'm really excited to see how the burpees F up the naughty Nancy mm-hmm. and how those cleans F up awful Annie. And most, I know exactly how naughty Nancy, I, I have a very good sense of how that's going to feel. Yeah. I'm excited to do it simply because I I'm, feel like that, that's the one that's like in your wheelhouse. Right. I'm a yeah. little weird in the head. Like I know, I, that, I think that one will be fun to see how much it hurts yeah. with those burpees added yep. and how fast you, you heard it here first. Fun to yeah. see how much it hurts. <laughs> awful Annie. I can do Annie pretty damn fast. Yeah. I got pretty good double unders, pretty good sit ups. Like I've, I've, I've carved out for me. A, a, I'm pleased with the times the that team I can. Was what two seventy five for that yeah, we're workout? Not gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, not with that attitude, Jack. Uh, we got a month. FYI, the R we'll probably do them like quote unquote. I'm putting it in bunny ears. Our RX weights, yeah, will be the women's weights, but probably even scaled from then. So what were they? Two. One were they two? It was one eighty five. Was one eighty five? Yeah, I think. Um, Sounds right. So we may even scale them, but I, I think for the cleans, they're, I can do five, 185, four, 185, mm-hmm. and they're going to, but they're going to be much slower than what the women were doing. Yeah. So my question as the programmer is like, how much do we want to scale it to keep it in the right structure? Right. So you don't want to scale the movements as much as possible. I don't want to scare the scale, the volume as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And to maintain the stimulus, it's probably going to have to be load. Well, we already, yeah, because we already know that we don't, we're not doing heavy, we don't have heavy ropes. Right. So it's just going to be normal and, jump rope. And not GHDs. Right. So it'll be yeah. med ball. I think I'm going to have people do med ball, yeah. normal med ball ab mat sit ups, yeah. where you got to touch it on the yeah. ground behind you and you got to touch it with your feet in front. Yeah. So I think with that one, we could probably keep it as designed and you're just doing regular doubles and sit ups yeah. with the med ball. Naughty Nancy. There's no, there, there's nobody in this gym who has any business doing the women's weights and above. Like, I think, mm-hmm. I, I don't think I have any business doing 125 pound overhead squats on that. 
So I'm tempted to make it 115.75, yeah. which it would be, that's a 20 it's pound, still heavier. right? It's 20 pounds heavier for the guys, 10 pounds heavier for the yeah. women. I think that's more appropriate for us. Yeah. Um, it lets 15 still be possible to be unbroken. Yeah. And it lets people kind of move quickly through the burpees and the, the runs. Mm -hmm. So those are my two. Yeah. Imagine that slightly longer time domains. Right. We're in that, you know, 10 to 12 for Awful Annie, 15 yeah. to 20 for um, Naughty Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the gym as a whole will do better with them. Yeah. I think Awful Annie, I'm excited about. Yeah. I love, I love Annie in general. So this is going to be fun. And I love cleans. And uh, yeah, the front squat. I don't give a shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> every front squat. Let's just go for it. So probably but, the but, way... but awful. But but of the but yeah, like you said, front squats, front squat. Awful Annie. Um, that's gonna be fun. I like. I love the. I love the, the throw and the heavy sets of cleans. That's yeah. gonna be a. They said it's it's not Annie anymore. So the way we're program is we'll probably put yeah. the clean and or the um the front squat and Fran together, the handstand hold and Dan Diane together. And then the other three will have days on their own. Yeah. Um, that's the five days, Monday through Friday. And then Saturday is going to be a nice wild card. And we'll wait and see what comes out maybe from the games yeah. or some sort of mashup or some sort of games like Saturday. Yeah. And we'll make it nice and fun. Because yeah, it was front squat, thousand meter row. That was the, Oh, I forgot about yeah. the thousand meter row. Front squat. But no, no, no. Um, so front squat and those are the other ones left. Yeah, what yeah. You're saying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that thousand meter row has been be all by itself. Yeah. All by itself. That one I am the least excited about. Because you know, like that's- I've done, I've done oh, yeah. many, many, many of those oh, on yeah. the Erg Porch at the United States Naval Academy in Hubbard oh, yeah. Hall. And my um, PTSD colon is still, I think, traumatized Puckered. from that, uh, those events. Dear God. <gasps> You're welcome, folks. Awesome. All right, cool. Gratitude? Uh, yeah, mine. Thank you for that birthday video. You're welcome. That was awesome. That was really cool. That was fun. Thanks, Shelly. I've, um, I've watched that video. About oh man, like twenty five times. So like, just watch, man. Obviously, watch. you and then like Duncan and and Rachel just being who they are, watching uh, Kelly snatch like in the Happy kitchen. Birthday, Eric. <laughs> and then uh, I love that like people were able to muster up the energy just for a little. And there was about another half a dozen that just couldn't get them in on time. Yeah. So um, and I did not give people a lot of heads up. Yeah. So yeah and um but yeah shelly was like it was just classic shelly like she it's it's not the joke that's funny it's her delivery <laughs> in that she can't even get the joke out because she's laughing so hard <laughs> at her own joke i like, agree that was just i'm like i was like is she how many glasses of wine is she in right now <laughs> joke is so, so thank you that's my gratitude everyone that was yeah. that was really that was fun that, that was, was cool. fun to thank put you. together cool Mine is uh, Mr. Roger Weiland. Uh, Sweet Roger. He has been a ton of fun these last couple of weeks. Questions and figuring things out and digging yeah. into stuff. Even today, like he was really like wanting to do the 30 pound ball, mm -hmm. but I only had the buckle ball left. Yeah. And he's like, I know me, man. I'm going to, I'm going to wear that buckle, but my nose, like, are you sure there's another 30? What should I do? Should I do the 20? I want to go heavy. And Brian Meyer, who's kind of like the secondary gratitude goes, dude, here. You can have the 30. I'll take the 20. I don't care. Yeah. And, and Roger was like, the set, he was like, oh, God, well, should, should I do the 30? Like, now all of a sudden it was real. Right. And so I'm like, what do you want me to tell you? Like, what do you want? And he's like, I kind of just want you to tell me what to do. And I was like, well, do the 30. And he did it and he crushed it. And he was happy. <laughs> and it was like, I mean, it was a street fight. And he That's won. So, so I, like, I love, so <laughs> I love how much he is both like leaning into it but also just getting frustrated, but keeps coming back. Right. And so like the dude is in the process yeah. right now and I love it. And I don't want to say like, I don't want to say that he was like, he got the 30 pound ball and he was afraid. Cause I don't like, I, no, he's, he's not afraid. afraid. No, he's but, afraid. It's that, but it's that total like, it's that total like, oh. I've made a huge mistake. Yes. Right. But <laughs> like, he stayed with it and he yeah. never lost height. He kept his depth. Like, yeah. like he's doing it right of, he's pushing weight and define like oh that's where i fall apart uh -huh. and then he's walking back yeah. he's wearing technique 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 and then he's pushing weight and he's asking the right questions and he's mm -hmm. yeah so just a ton of fun of in the moment i may sound frustrated buddy um i am so far from there is no frustration in that i'm it's yeah. they're good quite i'm loving it i'm yeah. loving the curiosity yeah. that uh that he's been bringing it and it just makes it fun so yeah yeah that and that today was watching him I mean, seriously, it was like watching somebody wrestle a tiger with that 30 pound ball yeah. and he walked out the winner today. It was awesome. Yeah. So, so. yeah, that's funny. I can just see that like, oh God, 
Oh shit! You're really gonna give it to me? Uh, oh god! What should I do? Should it's I use the thirty? Like, oh I use man! The 30? I can't believe I don't have a thirty-pound ball. <laughs> Wait, exactly. I was totally gonna do it this exactly. way. And Brian was this awesome. This is frustrating. Yeah, oh, here you go. Really oh no! <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, hey, uh, uh, oh man! I just lost it. It's the joke. Um, I'll find one. You gotta go. You got one. You got one ready. Hey. What? Oh, this one's bad. It's on my joke calendar today. What has? I think it's like what body part has a top and a bottom? I don't know. Your leg. Oh. Yeah, what? it's not a good joke. I'm oh, sorry. Oh. I, it's for it's I okay. It's okay. I mean, you might be off a little bit. I mean, it's kind of like what do you call a sick eagle? Illegal. <laughs> 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 no. No, that was good. That was great. Well done. Very patriotic. Of I you. can't do bird calls. All right, folks, that was fun. Games part two coming at you in about a month, and uh, oh, they'll be coming at you. So so hard. We'll see you on the creek. On the creek.